All right. So we are here to talk about the idea of a chicken and a vegan on an island. And if the vegan was starving, should they eat the chicken or not? So um, so my quick stance on this is that, yes, once you're, once you're starving, you have no other options. You're secluded. So wherever you're at, you you feel like nobody is coming to save you and you're close to dying. I, I would eat the chicken. Um, I don't know how long it would take as far as how close to dying I am, but uh, I would eat the chicken to survive. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on why you shouldn't. Uh, well, in certain ways, it doesn't quite matter because whether you eat the chicken or not, you could end up dying anyway. And whether um, and the chicken could end up dying either way too. But the thing is, in this world, we're all dying. So does that really matter or play into it? The thing is, we still try to help out animals regardless of whether we're all going to die in the end or not. Because the thing is, it gives us hope that maybe we can give the animal a life to live out um, peacefully without exploiting them or being cruel to them. <laughs> Because it's on us to make that decision. So whether we're on an island or whether we're in the city, it doesn't matter. It still applies no matter what. It also is like um, kind of like a, a cop out where you're making an excuse as to why you would kill an animal because mm -hmm. there's so many people that will make any excuse they can to um, kill an animal. And I believe not even for def self-defense or even um, uh, in desperate situations um, mm -hmm. should you break veganism um, because then it, it'll end up just being like any carnist action. You're um, just saying, well, I'm going to eat meat because I want muscle. I'm going to eat meat because I like the taste. It's uh, just any reason to eat meat. And so it's like, why are we making excuses for it instead of, and it's not even going to help with our survival anyway, because um, instead of focusing on the chicken and it, where it's none of our business what the chicken does, it's uh, like the chicken's trying to survive just as much as we are. Uh, why aren't we focused on our survival, trying to look at the distance for maybe some ship coming or seeing what maybe is available to us or seeing how what we can do to survive. It's like we're only wasting time trying to focus on the chicken. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, um, kind of where I'm coming from. Gotcha. OK, so so you wouldn't. Are there any cases that you would kill an animal like self-defense? I'm guessing maybe. No, not even then, because the thing is, then you're resorting to violence. And for me, mm -hmm. being vegan is not being violent, but instead helping the animal. So instead of killing the animal, I actually would try to help it survive, too, because I know that life is hard for the animal being stuck mm -hmm. on that island. If I feel it's hard, I can only imagine what it is for the animal, thinking how hard it is for them. Oh, I and didn't so even I would, mean on an island for that one. I just meant like just in regular life. Like if you have. No, even in regular life, you know, like I look at an animal and I see, uh, you know, what struggles is it going through? Uh, well, how can okay. I help? You know, what if an animal was trying to attack and kill somebody that you're close with? then I'd take the person out of that situation. So then it's not a situation. <laughs> you no, know, like I'm saying, like, I, I don't know how on earth you'd get in this situation, but imagine there's you and the closest person to you, um, not closest as in they're standing next to you, but closest as in you love them. Um, and there, you guys are in this area and you have a gun that you know one shot would kill a lion. And there's a lion charging at this person that you're really close with. And you could kill the lion. Let's imagine you're a good shot. You can kill the lion or you can let the lion kill and eat your friend. Yeah, would but you... it wouldn't even, well, the situation, that scenario wouldn't even work anyway because you can do a shot where it scares off the animal. So I'm saying, mm -hmm. like, this goes back to the trolley problem. It seems like a lot of our conversations go back to the trolley problem. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's four scenarios that can play out. One, you um, say kill the five people on the, tr uh, for the, um, 
railroad tracks, or the second one is to kill one person. The third option, because my teacher only let me do two, but I feel like there's more than that. The third option is to try to prevent the situation from uh, creating problems, uh, from it becoming a problem, like prevention. So if yeah. you see this in problem, like try to fix it, even if it doesn't work, at least you tried. Well, and yeah, then I... the, the fourth situation is to what you were saying, um, walk away, say it, it's not my problem. I'm not, you know, I can't do anything. I'm not going to participate. Yeah. Well, I, no, I think that's one of the two options. There's let it kill the ones that it's going to kill or switch it to the other side. But the reason that third option isn't an option is because that's kind of how hypotheticals work is you're giving the options that you're giving and then you have to pick from those options. Um, well, so the issue with those types of hypotheticals is that you're not allowing for other options. You have yeah. something preset in your mind as to it's going to be either or. And well, either testing. or reasoning is a logical fallacy. So it doesn't even make sense because there always are other options. It's just, uh, to me, I believe there's a solution to every problem it's mm -hmm. just when we don't, um, the reason why, uh, you know, there are no, so and we feel that there's no solutions to the problem mm -hmm. is because we haven't thought of it yet. Well, I mean, I agree with you. There's probably a lot of solutions to a lot of things and maybe people don't think about certain solutions, but not everything has a solution, you know, like if, if you're in a car and you're about to get in a car wreck and you have no control. You, there's no solution you could do if you have no control. You just happen to have no control. So like if, if there's a hypothetical situation, there might there might be some problems with them. They might not connect perfectly to real life, but they can show you how you feel. So in this case that I'm describing, where I'm saying your options are you can shoot this lion and hypothetically you can hit it and kill it, or you let the lion kill your friend. So in this hypothetical it would have to include that you can't scare the lion off with the shot because then I just have to throw in an element where the lion can't feel vibrations or hear anything. And so the shot doesn't affect the lion or whatever. But I mean, that's kind of the idea of a hypothetical is to is to figure out how somebody feels like, what do you care more about the the a natural thing just playing out and being equal, equally caring about your friend and this lion, so letting the lion do its thing, or caring more about somebody because they're either close to you or because they're human and you would kill the lion. Hello? the term for it but i think it's are you still there I uh, yeah you cut out for a second but yeah start over hi okay i'm sorry i'm back That's right. I, the the internet went out um anyway so i was thinking isn't that kind of uh begging i think the term is begging the question where you're or like doing a like a lead-in where you're trying to um make people uh, like get to a certain answer that you are desiring because that's what um, i feel is no. people have different answers so you can mm -hmm. switch the situation move no, no, the goalpost no. <laughs> there's no moving uh, of anything I, i'm just desiring to know your answer to a question that has two options but there are that's what i'm trying to say there are no uh, scenarios where you are limited by the options and uh, by uh, a certain number of options. The thing is, I, I disagree with the idea that there are uh, no solutions to, and there are problems that don't have solutions. I believe there is a pr solution to every problem. We just don't think of them. So mm -hmm. for you, maybe you're limited by what you're thinking about. Uh, we just don't feel like we have them. So mm -hmm. if we just broaden our minds and start thinking, sooner or later we start thinking of some solution and that's how mm -hmm. a lot of movies are <laughs> you know okay. the trope where it's like oh no we're done for and then someone's like wait what about this and they're like oh you're right you know and they're like i got a plan and then they save you know themselves 
Uh, yeah, I mean, sure, maybe, but I mean, okay, so okay, so let's look at the thing with the lion and the friend real quick, then. So you're thinking of the option is you could just shoot up in the the air and the noise scares them away. So let's just say that this gun you happen to have, or let's say you don't have a gun that has that makes a noise. You have a tranquilizer dart. Uh, it just uh, that makes happens. us so limited in our worth. What what's that? Oh, it, it's just uh. The problem is it's very limiting because people think that they're worth less and capable of less than they truly are. Like people don't tap into the uh, skills and abilities that they truly have because they don't mm -hmm. think of it. They are limited by what people tell them they're able to do. You know, what people say you're, you're capable of, people don't think of more or are told they can't do more when you can, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe, yeah, in some cases, I'm, I'm just saying in this case where you have a lion and your friend and yourself and you have a way to kill the lion, but let's say you have no other option. Like you don't, you don't have anything that will make the lion not go towards your friend unless you kill it. I, I just, uh, some things don't have other options. No. So you're saying it's go, but all you're saying is it's going towards your friend. Uh, the friend mm -hmm. yes right yes. and you're saying that but then i could think of what i could do right what, what would you I do can, well i would try to yell out to my friend or i would mm -hmm. try to move them out of the way or say move and i always do that you know and then you know because there have been times where i've been in a movie theater and i'm like thinking about you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? I'm always thinking of the scenarios because I want to be educated and skilled enough to handle all the what ifs. So then sometimes mm -hmm. there are, there is a fire in the, like the movie theater and the screen gets cut. And so I'm already like helping people out the door. I'm like, they're like, should I go out the door? See, there's these limiting people like you. They think there's no solution. And they're like, uh, should I go out the door? It's not appropriate to, because Whoa. people think it's not appropriate. So uh, they don't I, do it because it's not normal. And I'm like, where are you talking about? Where there is a fire, there's smoke. Can't you tell this is an emergency? Mm -hmm. Go out the door. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I hope it doesn't come across like I'm saying there's not solutions to things. Lots of things have solutions and lots of things have lots of solutions. What I'm saying is that there's, I don't think we should limit ourselves to understanding our own feelings by not creating hypotheticals that would limit ourselves to understanding our feelings. Yeah, but only if those hypotheticals make sense and work. And the problem is with yeah. yours, it's not working. So I'm saying, all I'm Wait, saying is you, it's, how, it's how between we... a lion and a person like my friend. I'm still mm -hmm. going to try to make sure that conflict does not take place where the lion does not kill my friend. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that doesn't happen. Maybe my friend ends up getting killed. It happens, you know, it's their problem, okay. not mine in the end. Cause like they're the ones getting okay. mauled. And you that's know, the answer. That, that's it's that simple. All you have to do is say that you're going to let your friend out. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, cause, cause, I, cause I mean, I mean the, the whole point, the reason I'm bringing up the friend is obviously we'd all do whatever we could do, but some people would kill the lion to save their friends. And at least one person now, <laughs> um, one person would not kill the lion and let their friend die. Um, but yeah, the, the trying is obviously what everybody would want to do. When you tell somebody the trolley car problem, you say, would you let it hit these five or would you personally move it to hit the one? Obviously, you'd try anything you could try, but the point of the hypothetical is that this is you, what you're left with. If you're left with this, what would you do? I think it's amazing. I think I think there's like thousands upon thousands of ideas like this that are amazing for testing our levels of what we do. I mean, it's kind of what we as vegans do. We we test the levels of what we can do. And uh, okay, so I, I guess that's really what it comes down to is the difference is that you wouldn't kill any animal to save any animal or uh, like including humans yeah and i'd actually take it as a lesson to see well this bad uh, wrongdoing happened how can i uh prevent this from happening to others sure. because just because i stop one person does not mean that that lion is not going to go and attack all the other lions or maybe there's more lions coming in and that one shot 
you know, didn't really stop anything. So what I'm saying is trying to stop something doesn't really stop anything. And that's why it's not really useful is trying how I see stop. it. Well, let's see if that's true by changing it to humans now. Um, okay. So your friend is at home and you're at home and somebody breaks in the house and they have a gun and they're going to shoot and kill your friend. I'm guessing that you let it play out the same way. I would try to intervene and I've done it before where I have intervened. Mm -hmm. Like I've had it where <laughs> my parents, um, I like told them about what these uh, certain people were doing. They were being uh, rowdy. So I didn't know this, but they decided to go walk up to the people. And so then they were causing a scene where more people were walking towards my parents and so I had to step in before they got ganged up on so I did like make noise and say over here over here and I'm like what are you doing and then uh, you know I was able to de-escalate the situation so mm -hmm. I I believe that I uh, like I feel like uh, with like gun rights and everything people uh, make an excuse that hey I should have a gun because this is a bad situation but for me um, I believe in outsmarting situations that I can use my wits and my skill uh, mm -hmm. of my intellect to uh, like transcend the situation. Like I believe in transcending situations, like a situation is bad, but it doesn't have to be if I don't let it. So I'm going to always For try sure. to make it not uh, get to the point where damage is done. But if damage gets done, it's like, it was already out of my hands to begin with because it was already going to happen, you know? I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, sure, it was already going to happen, but you could decide if you think a different outcome is better than that outcome. But yeah, that again, that's the point of the hypothetical. If somebody came into my house with a gun and they were going to kill somebody and I could do anything to make them not kill the person and them also not die, yes, of course I would do that. So the question is, if you know that that's not the case, you know that this person, this person holds a gun up to your friend and says, you kill me or I kill them. Obviously, they're not going to do that. It's a wild hypothetical. But the question is, do you say no, but I want you to not kill them and then they kill them anyways? Or would you would you shoot them or whatever you'd have to do to kill them to prevent them from killing somebody that's close to you? Well, I mean, isn't it in the movies where they try whack the gun out of the person's hands and everything like that? And yeah. So if you, stop if you do, it, you know. Yeah. So if you do anything that isn't killing the person, then your friend dies, whether you whack a hand or anything. And if you don't, and if you kill the person, then your friend does not die. Uh, so no matter what I, so you're saying no matter what I do, the friend dies, and then. Yeah, it's like an it's almost okay, like an wait, easy trolley car yeah. problem. So, so you, you, there's somebody there to kill your friend and mm -hmm. they either are going to kill your friend or uh -huh. you're going to kill them. OK, anything you do to attempt to stop it is just going to make your friend die by their hand. And the only thing you can do to stop it is to kill them. Mm. <sighs> Um, I mean, then you kind of go into the, like the legal part where it's kind of a good Samaritan, but I mean, I don't, I still wouldn't because, well, I could take the legal thoughts where usually even if it's a good Samaritan and you do it, you could still get into trouble anyway, because you killed someone and people will find that to be a problem and they won't, sometimes they don't know, well, did you do on purpose or not? And so from the legal standpoint, I still wouldn't do anything. Um, but I guess from a moral standpoint, uh, no, <laughs> I'm not going to uh, kill the person. <laughs> Interesting. Just because I'm not going to, it's not on me to kill people like that. <laughs> that's wild i've never heard i've never heard of such a thing okay that's, that's cool whatever that's cool i mean we all have different it's hard things. to live with but you know it's like one person's going to die either way it's going to be hard but yeah Ooh, something like that yeah um okay well now i just have to know then do you not think it should be illegal to kill people um <sighs> Uh, 
Oh, should it not be illegal, you said? Yeah, like are you saying are you saying that you think anybody and any animal, including humans, um, you would prefer them not to kill other humans and animals, but they they should be able to? No, I, I think people no one should be killing anyone. That's why I'm thinking, no, I know that you know, that's what I said. People yeah, people should think... not be killing other people. Correct. Uh, you know, we so shouldn't cons- be killing animals. <laughs> You yes. Know? That's what I'm no, saying. exactly. You don't think they should, but you think they should be legally allowed. You don't think there should be a government that says you can't kill. No, I think that there should be a government saying you can't kill. Okay. Because, uh, you know, I believe in anti-violence. So I'm saying I don't, I think, you know, government should work to try to not have people killing people Okay. and work towards that. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I didn't so I don't think, think it should be allowed to uh, kill people. Okay. You just wouldn't kill somebody or something to protect somebody else, but you do think the government should. Wait, say that again. Okay. So you, you wouldn't kill a person to stop them from killing your friend. You wouldn't kill a lion to stop them from killing your friend, but you would want say a police officer that needed to to kill somebody to stop them from killing other people is this correct no like they should so no killing, killing no matter other what. people yeah no killing okay 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 so <laughs> because so, it's like fighting fire with fire it just doesn't okay. end well let me try you know, to ends up with more people like at, at my um i was hearing the story about like the mafia where because they are like the self-regulating uh, police system their own police uh they would like kill people to like maintain, um, you know, the crime levels at a low level. But mm-hmm. since they had that within them, they started like killing each other because they were in that mode. It because mm-hmm. it just never ends. Like it's a cycle of violence. So okay. I'm just saying we should just try not to uh, escalate situations to that point, and we should try to not kill anyone or anything okay. <laughs> for any reason. <laughs> okay. Um. Even in self defense for the police officers too. So you, so if yeah. somebody's trying to kill you, okay, but you're just going to have to find a way to get that to not happen is what I'm saying. Like do whatever okay. you can prevent it, like, um, put in infrastructure, anything you can yeah. to make sure that doesn't happen. Is okay. What I'm let saying. me, but if it me, happens, it does, to... but use it as a learning lesson. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Let me, I think, <laughs> I, I think I can convince you to change your mind, but let's see, let's keep working on this. Okay. So, let, so you know how there's mass shootings in schools? Yeah. Okay. So say somebody has a, a gun, it's a, let's say it's an assault rifle. So not an AR 15, but one that's truly just endless bullets can just go and do their thing. Uh, not endless, mm-hmm. but let's say you got a magazine of like uh 90. Um, okay. So you got, you got a row of like 20 kids that are standing there and this horrible person wants to kill them all one by one in this row. Police officer shows up. Police officer has a gun. This guy has a gun. Uh, the guy is not worried about the police officer. The police officer has a clear shot, could kill this this mass murderer, and the mass murderer has already killed one, two, three, now they're four, five, and they're on their way to get all 20. Five are dead. The cop can shoot them at any point. Are, are you saying, I'm guessing you don't think the cop should risk their own lives without a gun, so are you saying the cop should let the guy finish shooting the 20? What, what would you say the cops should do at this point? Five are dead. The, the person's going to keep killing the rest. What should the police officer do? I mean, they'd have like a bulletproof vest, right? Um, sure. Let's say, let's say yes. I mean, so they could try to block some of the bullets, right? Like you think the cop should jump in front of the bullets? I mean, some of them do. So, you know. Do you think uh, they should it, be obligated to, or you're just saying if you were a police officer, you would risk your Well, I'm life. saying if we, we have laws where we don't kill anyone, then they would do other stuff like put in shields or, you know, try to t- uh, shoot the gun out of the person's hand or, you know, shoot the person's hand bef- uh, because it's not, not lethal. Like mm-hmm. usually they'll taste someone. You know? Okay. So violence is okay though. Uh, just not lethal violence for, for stopping um, the killing. 
I would say we should try to avoid violence because, as I said, uh, violence just begets more violence. So it's okay, best to it... not have violence. It's more about defensing and preventing situations from even arising, like preventing okay. that whole situation from rising. Yeah. Okay. But considering that there's 20 lined up, five are dead, and the next kid is like, we're talking five seconds away from dying, how much violence can happen to this this person? Uh, I would just say to like n shoot the gun out of their hands. I mean, you already have guns, so you could do that. Okay. And if they have are good at that, you know. Let's so say, I'd say try not let's to assume they're not harm the that. person. You know. <laughs> yeah. So I, I I don't think I don't think they're good at I don't think they're necessarily good at that. But I don't think many humans would be good at something like that. Which is why it's thought of that if somebody is a threat to one's life. You don't aim to wound. You don't shoot their legs. You don't. You shoot. You shoot to kill, or you don't shoot to kill. Those. Are, I think those are the only options. Not that that matters. You don't. You don't need to agree with that stance. But just so you know, I think that is how it's set up. So, would you? How much risk are you willing to take for the next um, six-year-old in this class to die to try to aim at a hand and a gun to shoot the gun? I'm guessing you're saying shoot the gun, not the hand. But to shoot yeah, the gun the to where the gun part. flies. So that's, I, I'm like, thinking. You know, like uh, shooting a hand is probably better than shooting them. But, you know, they could die just from all the blood loss. So you, the thing is, uh, it's about risk um, avoidance. Like just trying to avoid, you know, death happening. So it's mm -hmm. like you would try to aim for the gun, not the hand. <laughs> Cause you don't know what's going to come of it. And then it's your, uh, it's your fault that you caused that for that person. Like you intended to shoot the hand. Now they died. It's like, you didn't mean to, but now you did. So it's like, yeah. um, it, it escalates. I'm okay. saying if yeah. violence just ends up escalating. So I'm saying let's just avoid violence, you know, <laughs> sure. uh, for like hurt, hurting people. <laughs> In theory, I'm, I'm with you about the avoiding violence. I'm not with you on this one. Cause Sure, you could miss the person's gun and hit their hand or hit their body, and then that's an accident while you're attempting to avoid violence. But you could also miss the other direction. You could be shooting at their hand, their uh, at their gun, and just miss by an inch or a centimeter. Or maybe it slides off because <laughs> you're no, no, going no. to like make it where the the gun is uh, not able to be shot. You know. But then you could kind of whack uh, I, it in another direction, you know? I I'm not making anything able to not be anything. I'm pointing out that I don't think there's a high likelihood that people would be able to shoot a gun. So what I'm saying is if you shoot at somebody's gun and you miss and that person is in the middle of mowing down children, was it better to let the next kid die at the hope that you could hit the gun because it's that important to not kill I think shooter. you're you're probably focusing too much on the gun because sometimes it's not about the gun. Even if you miss, you're still getting them off guard, like showing them that, you know, there is uh, consequences that are happening. Um, so it gets it catches them off guard that so you know, they like see the that they're being the met lion. with a match, you know. OK. Yeah. And, OK. And then they start pointing the gun at the group of police officers that are out there and they start hitting the police officers. And then if the police officers don't want to get shot, so they jump out of the way, then the guy goes back to shooting the kids. I'm just saying aiming for the gun, uh, you can have the stance all you want. I'm just saying, are you not concerned that aiming for the gun solely that might scare them and might very easily miss them? And maybe it'll even shoot the gun out of their hands and then they pull out another gun how many kids are worth dying to be able to carefully take this person to jail that I'm guessing you're going to say should go to jail for life, right? Which... Yeah, I, I mean, they you can't get, because the thing is, they're probably not going to take out the second gun if they're like um, being met with resistance from the first one anyway, because it catches them off guard. So they're probably not going to think of it. But let's just say they do, because I, I know you want to pull out all the stunts. No, I, I think that's um, a, a wild idea. If a guy knows that the cops aren't even going to kill him to stop him from killing kids, why would, if I was that guy, do... I would kill all the cops. What do you mean? 
they're going, you know, it's about trying to catch them off guard and get them to be distracted enough and tell them to stop and everything else. Because mm -hmm. that's what they usually do is talk people down if there's like, say, a bomb threat or something. Not if they're in the middle of shooting children. But if there's a bomb threat, then there's a lot mm -hmm. of people dying on that, too. So, yeah, they usually do try to talk people down first uh, uh, sure, so, sure. Uh, for certain times, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, like, I would say to try to do your best to try to de-escalate the situation rather than escalate it higher, because maybe you uh, do shoot the person and then the kids do see that as being okay for handling um, dangerous situations. So maybe mm -hmm. they end up shooting people and then that, you know, they should, I'm just saying like, <laughs> so I'm saying um, you might want it. Like I would say probably all the way to the end, <laughs> because the thing is it's that triggering of an emotional of a situation where people will say, this is so horrific. They're probably going to do something about it to prevent it from happening again. But is what can't... I'm saying. Like you can't stop situations from happening. Things end up happening, but no. you can only just limit it from happening. No, and then you try can. to prevent it in the future. No, 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 no. If there are 20 people lined up, five of them get shot and you can kill the person you can change that situation you're just saying that because of your stance on no no violence no i'm least... saying you can't prevent it from um like you at that moment you haven't mm -hmm. like it started without you is what i'm trying to say correct yeah yeah that's what i'm saying like you didn't stop it from starting it, it happened before you even got in all you could do now is try to de-escalate it and prevent it from mm -hmm. happening again so that's where i stand because the thing is it doesn't matter if it's 20 at this moment maybe in the future where you're not around and you're not seeing it visibly it's more than 20 because mm -hmm. as i said the impression you have on the children or this and that any of these other external factors could play in and what about them mm -hmm. are you going to care about those people you know you, you when mean... does it end what you mean the 15 that you save that might think that it's okay to kill s serial killers no they like get, they get exposed to violence so then they mm -hmm. become violent and violence becomes normalized and that's how i feel we end up with this world where people eat animal products and this <laughs> and that because uh you know they say like at these factory farms uh there's more crime that happens there i, I don't know if it's true or not but I could only imagine like the impression it makes psychologically when you're okay with violence, um, you know, how it continues, you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying, I'm about like not continuing violence <laughs> and trying but, to prevent it from happening. But how many, yeah. yeah, I guess what throws me off is the amount of deaths that maybe you're okay with having for this. Cause like I, I if I was that guy, I mean, it, it's hard to imagine yourself being a person that's, shooting a bunch of children with a gun but if i wanted to not go to jail then i would kill all those police officers and then I'll, i would just have to go find more weapons and then anytime there's ever police officers that weren't allowed to kill me and wouldn't even try to kill me i would just kill all of them and luckily this seems like the world would be set up for me to be able to come become the king of the world, aside from the other people that are going to want to be king of the world that also are allowed to go and kill everybody. I mean, haven't you heard about the rebound where um, people are like shooters and then since they're televised, then it sets up for more shooters. So, uh, you know, oh, you just mean that some happened, people you know. some people will become shooters because it seems glorified or whatever. Yeah, so I'm saying yeah. like if you make it look really horrific, then people might think about how mm -hmm. horrific it is too. But not the people. I don't that know want if that's to gonna be... really matter either. <laughs> if you just film all the dead police officers, that's not gonna make people not want to be killers. That'll make them want to be killers more. But also, who's gonna replace the police officers? If you get if you have it known that anybody with a gun can kill a police officer and get away with it as long as they can run fast enough or drive fast enough, then 
I don't think you'd get any more police. Well, officers. it's like why why did we even allow a society to have guns or have police officers or have all this? It's because um by vi- violence became normalized and escalated all the way to this point. So it's like if you just don't escalate situations, they don't get violent, is what I'm trying to say. Um but I I don't know what you're saying with um you know it's the person shooting the police officers and the people and then oh mm-hmm. what are you saying with that are you saying well, you, that after you're... they kill the 20 people they're able to kill all the police officers and then yeah. kill everyone else yeah I kill whoever you want what what's stopping you from killing anybody it's just a uh, it's like uh they had these uh virus uh, situ- uh simulations. And sooner or later, you run out of people. So it just doesn't work after a while. Wait, what do you mean? So there are, You're just saying there after are there's limited. no humans left? No, I'm saying for where they're located, it stops with them. Why? The, the, you're talking about like the guy that's killing the 20 children. He kills all the police officers. Well, now he might as well kill everybody else in the school. So let's say no, 2,000 kids. They do run out of people to kill is what I'm saying. So but, there's no more where they are. Maybe people got warned of the situation. They all left, you know? Oh, yeah. But I mean, they're going to get in their car and drive wherever else. I mean, clearly they're interested in killing. Um, so they're going to just go kill everybody. I don't. I, it seems like the only thing that would stop them from killing people would be people doing an action that you don't think would be okay, which is if somebody else that is okay with killing goes and kills that person because they don't like what they did. Um, say that again. They don't go and kill people because like the only they thing, like the only thing did? that could, no, I'm saying the only thing that could possibly stop this person or likely I would stop this person from just killing as many people as they want a thousand a day, just for fun is if somebody kills them. But you're saying that I know I don't believe that, as I said, um, like violence being allowed is a sign of a weak society to begin with because they're not able to defend themselves. So uh, you want to have a strong society in order to not be um, a victim of violence, you know, so. That's why they would have like the back backpacks that would be bulletproof and mm-hmm. yeah, but I mean, um, stuff like that. Like, uh, you know, you could put a fence around. You can have drills. You know, there because the thing is that's the issue plaguing public schools. It's like how do you make it um, an environment where it's welcoming, but not in a way where it brings in the wrong crowd. You know where it's Mm -hmm. public and open, but not bringing in the wrong crowd. Because the thing is, they don't want, schools don't want violence. They don't want to have things escalated or even happen to begin with. So they put in measures to stop that from happening. So Mm -hmm. eventually it's like things will peter out where people will be aware of it. There will be defense measures against it and people will become stronger because of it. So they won't be, um, in a state where they could succumb to, you know, violent acts is what I'm mm-hmm. saying. Like people will know better. Like those people were probably not capable enough to protect themselves is what I'm saying. Like mm-hmm. maybe someone builds a suit that, or, you know, we have bulletproof vest, you know? So it's mm-hmm. like people learn from the situation and they become better. And then you have a more resilient society Yeah, I because mean, I th- these things happen all the time, you know, but I they stop we- short, you know, I think, yes, I think we should create actually things. usually the, doesn't the shooter end up killing themselves anyway. So as I said, it is usually a, a limiting circumstance at the end, but yeah, yeah, some might, but the question is how many are we willing to let die to not kill the shooter? Well, as I said, you don't try to let anyone die to begin with. Mm -hmm. Like people will die, Mm -hmm. but whether it's one person or another, it it Mm -hmm. doesn't matter. These things happen. It's like, how can we just try to not let things happen to begin with? How can we prevent it? And how can we defend ourselves? Because clearly if they weren't able to defend themselves, they were not, uh, they were uh, vulnerable to attacks something's wrong with that situation to begin with like someone didn't prepare for it because they feel that violence could be met with violence 
but so that they don't have to have you know setting up to defend any protections setting up to defend a situation from an attack would involve killing no it could be trial and error because they do like materials testing all the time uh like with ballistic gel and everything what i'm saying is you can either um defend yourself through violence or you could defend yourself through protection and prevention so i'm saying there's two ways to handle it and the problem is when you do meet violence with more violence you're not focusing on defending yourself and protecting yourself and prevention so then uh, that's uh why i heard there's some issues with like police brutality because it's like uh they're not preventing anything they're just you know uh meeting a problem like mental health with uh violence so it's like Hmm. It's not handling any situation at all, violence, because okay. those pe- just because you shoot uh, shoot that killer, what's going to stop the next killer from killing someone else in another mass shooting? We haven't handled the problem of protecting people to where they're invincible and not able to get shot to begin with. That's why I'm saying we're so focused on how to kill the shooter. We're not focused on ourselves. Like we're always focused on someone else. You know what I'm well, saying? Like I don't think you have to you be on the island on... with the chicken. You're focused on the chicken. <laughs> why aren't you focused on taking care of yourself? That's why I'm trying to say. Well, like... no, I mean that would be the taking care of myself. But um, I don't think. Well, anyways, hold on. I gotta. Um, I actually gotta hop off here in a sec. This has been a very fascinating <laughs> conversation, and I want to try and get one more idea in here. Okay. So somebody has a bomb set up. There's 5,000 people in this room and there's a bomb. And the guy is going to blow the bomb. He's going to, it's going to kill him. It's going to kill all 5,000 people. And if a police officer has a, a shot on him where they, they could shoot him, take him out, he would die. He wouldn't press the button. There's no other way to do anything. He's holding the the bomb thing <laughs> Again, with the with button. The no other way. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh that, that's God. the point. I'm trying to figure out to Cause, what because you know there are uh, they show in the movies where mm-hmm. there's like this uh, bomb expert where they go and find the bomb and then they cut the wires and then yeah, they the bomb stop is on, it, You know, the bomb is on this man, and if he doesn't press a certain button with his thumb then it's not going to go off. So if he gets shot and doesn't press it, maybe he'll press it anyways after he's shot if he doesn't die instantly, but you can hope that he wouldn't. So if he presses this button, him and everybody else die. If he does not press this button and he gets shot, then maybe the 5,000 innocent people live. And let's imagine they're all three years old and they're the cutest little toddlers. Okay. (laughs) Do we not take the shot? Yeah, but uh, again, there's this issue where you're not uh, you. The thing is, as I said, violence is a state of weakness that you are not able to take care of your huh? Uh, uh, That's fine. I'm not claiming anything to do with any of that. So I'm saying like you're not capable of handling a situation in a way that does not involve violence, because mm -hmm. if you were smart enough, you would be able to stop the situation from getting worse through your intellect and this one the fact that these people what i'm saying is these people came with guns they did not come with um something else that might not kill the person and still save the Mm -hmm. like a tranquil tranquilizer you know Mm -hmm. so i'm saying they came with uh meeting violence with more violence so i'm saying that you don't have to uh have one person die so -hmm. that 5,000 people don't die. I'm saying you don't have to have anyone die if you just have the right idea on how Mm -hmm. to handle it to begin with. But people just, the issue is people are not, sometimes they're not smart enough to think, how can I handle the situation without resorting to violence? They don't have any other ideas that they think of. They don't want to think of anymore. Okay, They just want to get rid of it. So they just meet it with violence fair enough you know? let's let's say that uh the best thing to do is the police have tranquilizers the police are on yeah. their way they're not there yet let's say i'm there and i have a gun i don't have tranquilizer options the bomb is with the guy there's five thousand people in there and he's 
counting down. But again, it, it's a state of weakness because you're not, you don't know of anything else. You haven't yep. thought of anything else. Correct. You've done I, better. Yeah. So the guys, like, you haven't thought about how to distract the person uh, it well enough to keep mm -hmm. them from doing that. You know yeah, what I'm so saying? The guy, uh, no. Because the guy is counting down from 10. He's going to press the button and kill everybody. No, but I'm saying like, say you were smart enough to distract the person so that mm -hmm. when it goes to 10, they don't click uh, it. Okay. So hypothetically, I, I hypothetically, I say the best thing humanly possible and the person ignores it. They don't even look my way. They're counting down from 10. They're going to press the button. I have a gun. I have to think within 10 seconds. And let's imagine even if you want that I can think forever. Um, and you're not gonna shoot the the button out of the person's hand, right? Uh, or shoot well, their hand, right? Definitely. Like sure. The guy announced, "I'm gonna press this button in ten seconds. If I hear a gunshot, I'm gonna press it immediately." So yes, I'm not gonna risk missing his hand and trying to hit the the thing. Especially, I don't know if the things would getting shot would make it explode. So I have an option to kill the guy that's wanting to kill himself and others or letting these others die is it so you want to kill the person is what you're saying <laughs> like well, that's I, the thing oh, you want to i want, want to. to kill that person yeah yes, you I'm want to, to that's a problem yes. so now you have i don't think two that's a people problem. that are violent that's what i'm trying sure. to say like that, and that's fine wait <laughs> violence begets more violence like you I'm, want now I'm you take one you... no but that's what i'm saying like let's let's dice and break it down really quick okay the thing is, first you have one person that is uh, wanting to do damage. Now there's another person that sees them. And then I want to become violent by wanting you to want to <laughs> get rid of this person. So I'm saying violence begets more violence. So okay. that's why it's just not something that I just want to participate in increasing the level of violence by continuing violence over and over again well i don't think it's increasing the and level iterating I think it's, it out in this case it's decreasing it, depending on uh, i get it how, depending on however you you view it but anyways um no like i i'm just saying uh, i'm not going to try to participate in that because uh, again it's your you're going to be making that call for yourself it's your decision what you do with your life if you want to participate in the violence yeah. you're I'm going just... to you know i don't have any say in that yeah so you're saying you wouldn't i shoot... would try to say can you try to do something else can you yeah, figure you... it out okay even but... if you are able to have a clear shot and everything mm -hmm. i'm still going to ask can you please do something else you know what e i'm even saying? up until the level of the kids dying yes the five th five thousand <laughs> Yeah, that's can wild. We please try to figure out something else. No, 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 that's no, no, all no, I'm no, going no, to do. no, no, no. <laughs> that's like, not I fair. would probably that's, think of some think idea, fair. you know. I well, I just don't think that's fair because because the idea is that you you wouldn't think of the idea. So it it's 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 all right. No, to have but your even stance. if I don't think of the idea, the fact that I tried that to me that's what matters most is trying. You know. I I don't think you're right. <laughs> I definitely wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't feel it's probably not right. I but don't that's think how you I think any I wouldn't think you should be arrested. I feel like that that room with 20 people, it's like if you close the door or stop them from continuing, then you're not going to continue, but you're saying they would continue and well, it, it kind of gets nonsensical. Let's just stick on the degree. let's stick let's stick to the five thousand and the bomb. Yeah. But uh yeah, I don't know. If you had a gun and you could have taken the shot and didn't just because you were hoping you could convince them not to. I like again, I don't think you should be arrested. I mean, there's I other ways. Think... Like I would tell people to leave or maybe I'll just you know the think of something yeah, but there's I'm no going leaving to try it's all to think of something the building's locked up you're I, gonna like, say you know, right the, but i'm just saying i would still try to think of something i i would always just try mm -hmm. to think of something and that's my yeah default. so it would come down to did you kill the kids and it, like people they, could say it's my fault you mm -hmm. know because i didn't decide to increase and like tell you to kill the person yeah so I'm saying people would blame me, but I still am going to stick to oh, trying I'd... to find a way not to kill anyone. 
I would totally blame you. <laughs> now the trolley car, not so much. This is so much easier than the trolley car. The trolley car, I would let the five but, die, and that's fine. This yeah. is not like that. This is well. This I'm is- saying the thing is with this mm-hmm. like bomb thing. People will blame me, but you'll have to think like, what caused this person to get there? Why aren't people blaming other people? Like, no, who's oh, really all in? So, like, maybe I'll be involved, mm-hmm. but so will everyone else. Whoever birthed the person, well, you, whoever you would be, riled you, them up to that. Yeah. Themselves. So the person that birthed, there's a difference you know? between right and wrong, though. A person that birthed the person didn't do anything wrong necessarily. They just birthed the person. Well, I would per- say they're partially responsible because they didn't have to. <laughs> You know, yeah, so I'm saying there's a lot in, of things involved at play. But they didn't, so, but they didn't do the an action is, that's reasonable to call a bad action unless you think birthing people is a bad action and then that's just its own thing. No, I'm just saying like, I'm saying that when I'm going to get blamed, it's because I'm very visible and it's very mm. obvious, but there's going to be a lot of other factors at play that won't be obvious and won't be blamed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, I will take on the blame. Yeah, I'll <laughs> say... I'm sorry, I did not stop the person from doing this. I didn't do it. I'm a, I, well, I can't, eh, apologies don't mean anything here, but I'm yeah. going to say I didn't do it. Uh, like I didn't stop the person, you know? Yeah. Um, but that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I'll say I tried. That's, and that's weird. All I'll say. That's just such a strange, <laughs> I mean, it, it's cool. I don't want you to change your mind unless you truly yeah. change it, but that's just such a strange vegan stance. It's a strange, it's a strange human stance at all, but it's definitely a strange vegan stance. I just don't get it. I don't, but I like, and so after that, I'm going to keep thinking like, what am I going to do to prevent these situations from happening again? So maybe it happens once, but, um, like with the, the pandemics, it happened once and it kills a lot of people but then we learn from it and become more resilient as a society and more people are going to be born to fill up the places that those people yeah, were but, in. So I'm saying it doesn't, uh, but the problem do is that was a virus. That was a virus. Huh? The problem is that was a virus that most people would want to have stopped in this situation. Right. I mean, obviously I would want to have this person not do what they're doing, but I'm saying I'm not, um, I, could have possibly played a part in this person getting to this point. So I'm saying societally, like, what are we doing that's creating this weakness in our society that causes us to be at a state of weakness to Mm -hmm. uh, lead to moments where we are vulnerable and that we can have this harm caused onto us? What are we not doing? And I feel like violence gets us off track by, because the thing is you shoot this one person, what's going to stop the next person? from doing it because we never thought about how can we um, defend ourselves and protect ourselves to not let the situation be a situation. That's yeah, what no. I'm trying to say. We, yeah. When we meet with violence, it doesn't stop it much of anything. It doesn't uh, make us any better. It just makes no. us uh, participate in the violence too. You know, no, this person no, no, wants no, no, to no. kill, now we want to kill, you know? And then no. maybe people, maybe if I said yes to you, I say, yes, kill it. Now the whole society is going to be happy that I participated in the violence. Now they're all okay with it too. So I'm saying how many people, billions of people are going to be okay with participating in that violence. So I'm saying more people are participating in that violence. I think we should, I think we should all be okay with participating in good violence. But (laughs) good good violence. (laughs) Did you just say good violence? Good violence. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, well. No, no, no. Shooting a bomber to, to save 5,000 people, I, I think that's easily clear to call that good violence. Um, Again, I, it, it's like, it's kind of like brainless violence is the issue I'm having because you don't know how to do any better. So you resort to violence as a solution. Then it just normalizes the idea that violence no. is a solution to problems. That's no. all I'm saying. No, it does not. It does not. <clears throat> if there are solutions to problems, we should all work towards figuring them out. 
separately. I, I know, but it, it still normalizes it, is what I'm saying. It, it normalizes says, violence the killing is okay, of people to it, save yeah. other mm -hmm. people. Yes. Yeah, that's why and, I'm having an issue with it. And I get it. I get it. We all have different And so things. now more people participated in the I, killing of a person than I the want, people killed. I want everyone to participate in the killing of these people. I'm bummed that I know of one person that will not. <laughs> And there might be a couple more in the world. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm shocked <laughs> at this at this stance, but it's all right. But yes, I want more people to to uh, Can commit I, uh, this violence. Can I leave you with a reading? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a short story I read in high school called "The Ones Who Walked Away from Amala's," where it starts off with a idyllic looking place and everyone's happy and everyone's celebrating it's a parade and the hello hello um hold on you're you're oh you're back i'm not sure if you can still hear i can hear you now yeah it cut out for a sec you're back. <laughs> anyway, so um, the thing is, it's very idyllic, and the person who is uh, the first person, the character, is like, something doesn't seem right. And so they walk around, and they see people upset, some people walking away from this place, and they wonder what's going on. And then turns out there's this person uh, being tortured at, just to keep the place running. And so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so people see get to see that person and see that they will never experience that um, glory that this place has. So is it worth um, that one person suffering so that everyone else can, you know, enjoy that moment? And some people, they can't handle it. They don't like that idea, mm -hmm. so they walk away. And so those are the people who walk away from Amala's, which is the, the city, <laughs> where it's all nice <laughs> except yeah. for that one person's situation yeah i mean i can't remember the exact detail aside from what you just mentioned and i would say that nobody should be forced to suffer to make everyone else happy yeah so that's why i'm saying like it comes down to that like mm -hmm. are we okay um as a society with violence like hurting someone in order for us to feel better or if we're we if we're us? saving people you very much yes <laughs> very much very much i don't even think right. i don't even think there's a but question that's what to i'm it. saying but that's what it is like those people got saved and have a nice life because that one person gets to suffer you know oh well suffer is yeah. complicated uh that one yeah. person gets to die now i don't personally view prisons as a place for um, getting revenge or people being punished or any of that. I view prisons as a place to remove people from the harm they're causing. Um, so I don't want people to die or suffer or any of that stuff. But yes, if somebody is going to cause suffering and cause deaths and cause various different things, I think they need to be stopped. If they can be stopped without killing them, that's the best. Um, right, I, don't, but I don't think they should get the death It's kind of like the hunter becomes the hunted. You end up being the killer in the end, if you're okay with yeah. this, and now you make everyone else okay with it, and then that becomes yeah. normalized. That's okay yes. to kill. I think That's it is okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very okay to kill to protect, for sure. Yeah, I get it. I'm just saying from my standpoint, so that you understand, is that yeah, um, being uh, okay with um, like killing uh, violence as a way to solve issues, uh, creating that normalization increases the number of people that are okay with it and want to participate and end up do participating in it versus uh, people that actually do end up being killed in the end. Yeah. <laughs> because, uh, you know, it's like heart disease. There's more people that die from that because people are okay with the violence that happens to their bodies versus the number of actual murders that happen is really small. Yeah. So I'm just saying there's a normalization of violence and it ends up, I feel, killing more people than what's visible. And then just the, the 5,000.
Gotcha. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Does that I'm make sense? Think, yeah, I'm going to think this over and uh, okay. <laughs> I'm definitely going to, it'll be interesting to see uh, reactions to this. Yeah. Um, so I'm saying then, I, I just believe in um, trying to become more resilient as a society, trying to prevent issues from happening, trying to defend ourselves and make ourselves better and think about how we can be better, even mm -hmm. when bad things are happening, rather than Part, uh, jumping in and participating in it because I just feel like it never ends it just continues and snowballs where it's like hmm. one uh, violence happens we get another and then we all come join in and it's just a mess that's all gotcha. I'm yeah I got you okay. okay um but yeah I gotta get going so uh yeah. that's a good place no to stop it so yeah it was good talking uh, I'll yeah. talk to you later okay okay you too mm -hmm. all right bye